All right. Beginning of this video, yesterday, I was so frustrated at this thing. I went and get back on this one. Yeah, this one. I went as far as to file the top of this down and even filed some of the bottom of this and got both my calipers out. I don't have a mic small enough. Uh, And I'm just, it, it's, this thing is just a hair, let's see, 23, what was it, uh, 23.585, and it's just, it's just a hair bigger all the way around, the whole, the whole assembly, the whole thing. The only thing that's the same size is from, let's see, from here to here is correct. But everything else is just a touch bigger. But by looking at this one and looking at the teeth and, and putting the caliper on it and doing the best I can with it, I'm going to put this one back in the old one. It doesn't show as much wear. It really doesn't show as much wear. So, in my uh, infinite wisdom, I'm going to go ahead and put the spring. Let's see. You guys can see. I got the spring in there. I'm gonna put the old one in there. And that is gonna be all she wrote. I went. I even went as far as to put the old uh, ball bearing and spring in there, and it it did the same thing. So. Boy, that spring. This this is one of the toughest springs on a ratchet I've ever run across. Hold my hand right. Hold my mouth right. Push it in there easily. Yeah, I was gonna say usually I can get it in there too sweet, no problem. Anyways, huh. <laughs> I'm gonna get this. This will work. I'm, I'm. I know it will. I cleaned the body up on this thing a week or so ago. I got. I cleaned all the rust and everything out real nice. Got it looking good. Ah, uh, here comes the rain again. I can hear the rain hitting my metal roof. Yeah, this is turning. Now let's dry fit everything. Still have plenty of grease on everything. Looks like. What I'm doing is I've got to set this cam right in the center and then this drops in. And then it locks. And you can see it has a good positive lock. <sighs> Looks like it's going to work pretty good. Now A little bit more grease on this. Did all that work yesterday. Man, my fingers were sore. I was so mad. You get frustrated at yourself when you do something. 
and I still have not went online to look and see if there's a video put one of these together okay now if screws go in and tighten and won't put it in a bind look at there back and forth back and forth Works good. All right, now got to put this in, and I guess I need to set it on my anvil over there and just peen it over. I have a little bitty hammer that just for these purposes, an old craftsman I got. <coughs> I restored. Oh, excuse me. This is the blue point. I found that head in the dollar bin at the at the pawn shop about a half a year ago. Man, that, that was a good little buy there. Anyways, uh, let me let me switch this over and show you that if I screw up ball peening it over. All right, let's see if I can do this without screwing up. That anvil's kind of, oh, you know what I think? I think, I think this needs to be done before you put the anvil together. That don't, that just doesn't hit center. That just doesn't hit right. Maybe. Well, I've done started. Let's see if I can't select it over a little bit. Here we go. Show you guys if I'm screwing up. All that work. Yeah, I'm more proud of this stupid little thing than any of the others. I gotta clean it up real good now. Now I can put the snap on or the craftsman together. All right, let's do this little craftsman. These little boogers are kind of tricky. I've lost the ball bearing on these before. I have screwed up and lost the ball bearing. Oh shoot, I just realized something. I moved my magnet, didn't I? Okay, hang on stupid, what'd you do with the magnet? Oh, did I stick, did I stick the ball bearing inside? All right. <laughs> I had a I had a stupid moment just then and I did I put did I put the ball bearing the old snap-on stuff in here? This is the old snap-on stuff. I'm 
clean my workspace off. Let me get. Oh, I don't know what I did. My I set my magnet down somewhere. Let me go try to find it. I've been doing a lot this morning. <laughs> you guys aren't going to believe this. My wife laid a project down right on top of my workspace. The magnet stuck to a piece of the metal that she had on her project she wanted me to fix. And it's the way I found it. No wonder I couldn't find my magnet. I knew I left it here. <laughs> oh my goodness. These wrenches have been giving me hell. <laughs> oh. Yeah, oh my goodness. I thought I was crazy. I said, I knew, I knew my magnet was here. I, I never... I didn't move it. I know I didn't. <laughs> I'm not going to tell her. I'm not going to say nothing. Well, wait a minute. She probably will watch the video. She laughs at me when I make videos, so... <laughs> okay. Let's put this... Let's see if you guys can see here. Somebody up there might uh, want to see how this is done. Drop the spring down in the hole. You put the bearing on top. And usually what I do, I, I, this screwdriver just works pretty good. It's an X-Lite. X it's thin enough to where I can press this down. Usually I don't lose the ball bearing. I have lost once or twice like that. like that now I've lost twice now Let's see if I can get the bearing in there ah oh, popped out again I'm trying to cover it with my finger so I don't lose it yeah it keeps it keeps coming off just get it. Okay, I got it in the hole. Can you, I hope you guys can see. And then I'm gonna drop this down like there. There, the bearing's in. That's how I do it. I mean, if you're afraid of losing the bearing, I would stick it in a, a, a I don't know, a tote or maybe a big Ziploc bag or something like that. Uh, but normally when I keep it down, face down like this on these Craftsman, I, the ones, uh, I've got, like I said, I've got a couple of these without the oil holes and that's the way I've done it. Usually the ball bearing pops out, it pops out down in here somewhere. It'll pop right in the opening in there. So, then, yeah, I'm gonna put a little bit of, little bit of grease on it. It don't need much. And to tell you the truth, I probably only use this maybe once or twice. I've got so many ratchets now. Normally what I do, and I do this at work, I've got three or four ratchets. If I'm working on something, instead of changing the socket on the ratchet, I'll put different size sockets on the ratchets. So whatever I need, I just grab it. It's kind of like, uh, kind of learned that from my wife, uh, being a scrub tech during surgery, they have certain instruments laid out on the table. And, you know, instead of changing instruments, they just, just get a new instrument. And that's kind of the way I do with my tools. I just get what I need. Oh yeah, that's smooth. A lot better than the trouble I had with the snap-on. I just don't understand why this one's so expensive. It's amazing too, this is, uh, you can feel the heavy metal in the new part. It's, it really is heavy. I was kind of impressed on that. Okay. It goes at a 45 like this. I need my fancy little homemade pliers. I 
Oops. Man, that spring's tough. It's got some tension on it. You know what I'm wondering? If I can just squeeze it with my fingernail. See if you guys... Perfect. See a little clip part of it there and there. 45 right in the center. Okay. And put a little grease in down in the top here. They really need to keep it on the table so you guys can see what I'm doing here. I know some, like I said, some of you guys like your oils and stuff, but I really like, I've used this grease for a long, long time, so. And, you know, it's one of those things, if it's your tool, you can use what you want. Your tools, your rules. I mean, if you like three-in-one oil on it, put three-in-one oil on it. You don't have to listen to what someone else tells you. If you if you get good uh, use out of it, I, I do know someone that uses uh, like a hop. I think it's a hops gun oil on most of his stuff. He's got a lot of it. That's what he uses. And on top of that, your tools. Like I say, your tools, your rules. You can take it apart, clean it yourself. I am a firm believer in old, good old used tools because I, I use my tools at work every day. I mean, it's you just have to have them. Okay, you to drop that in, this has to be, this part has to be in the center or the gear gets in the way. It... If you can see it right at the bottom. Anyways, just make note, this has to be in the center to drop the main gear in. Well, this one went together easy. Can't believe the parts for this thing is so expensive though. 23 bucks for or 24 bucks for this thing where the snap-on was $13. But that being said, snap-on gave me the biggest friggin' headache too. I was not happy. Oh no, 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 go in there. Oh hell, I got that in there with my fingers. No, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Okay, let's back up again. I probably should have put all that in one piece in there, the gear and all in one one step. Probably would have went in easier. Wouldn't fight it as much. Yeah, what the heck. Take this off here. Now, let's put the ring clip back on. in there. Back this out. Man, you know what's really odd? This one sounds smoother than this one. Huh, wouldn't have noticed that. All right, man, 
clean these up a little bit. See what they look like. Oh, my tools out of junk out of the way. Let me go get my wax hot up. I was using it somewhere else earlier. Damn it. I'm just going to open this can. I just realized my wife stole my S&K screwdriver. She took it outside. She's using it. Actually, this wrench was pretty rusty, beat up pretty good. Uh, we, When we first saw this at the pawn shop, we thought it was bent on purpose. Someone just heated it and bent it, or bent it. We weren't. We didn't realize that that's the way it was made. Uh, I have never seen one. So, uh, we, you know, I was planning on taking it to the the uh, press and straighten it up. <laughs> That would have been a dumbass thing, or stupid thing to do, sorry. Really would have been stupid though. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought about it. I wouldn't, I mean, I've never seen a bent. And by the looks of it, whoever had it used it. And then more than likely it sat in someone's toolbox and they, you know how people pass on and leave things to their family member. And some people don't care about the tools, the old stuff. This is an older generation tool. Now I do not have one with the oil hole in it, which I really don't care about the oil hole because I grease much. I like the grease. And if it does get stiff, I'll take it apart and clean it. It's my tool. I take care of my stuff. This was pretty nasty when he started. It, I think it turned out really good. That, that, I hope it comes up on camera, the shine. But uh, I spent a little extra time cleaning this one up. Uh, I don't think it looked this good from factory. Uh, it's an older, I need to look it up. It's got oil port. I need to find out when they quit making uh, and it does say oil on top of it. And it is a 43785. I got my glass. 43785, yeah. But it's got to go. I put a little extra polish on the sides in here just because it was beat up. And uh, the ends down here, I think it was this side here, was beat up pretty good. And that wrench turned out, I mean, this one, you can still see the pitting. You know, I, I can't do anything about that. That's just too much. And then, of course, he notched it for his. And then he went around. He looks like he started, I don't know if you can barely see it, but he started around in a circle and went with a grinder, all made a little zigzag all the way around it. Got most of that out, but does say snap on F712 and there's some pitting there too which uh, I didn't I guess for working like uh, if you're working under uh, I'm trying to think of what model V6 it's got the I can't remember which one maybe it's a 3.7 anyways to get to the to the Spark plugs, it probably worked pretty good, but they didn't have that engine at the time, so I'm not sure why the angle head back in the day, why they needed it. Uh, 
I guess it would eliminate a a swivel socket. You could you could plus with the angle on the head swiveling like that. That's it's pretty cool. All right, guys. All that trouble yesterday, and I am gonna. I got my one of my mowers in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, I got a bolt I torqued the other day to 90 pounds. I'm gonna see if this will break that 90 pound bolt. Pretty sure it will because it's it's got a positive latch. A little bit of wear maybe on that old gear, but nothing like the busted tooth. And I don't know. That's uh, you know, how often do you run across a uh, snap-on wrench for? dollar <laughs> yeah yeah I think that's actually what I got in it maybe a dollar but now I got the rebuilt kit but uh, yeah proud little tool now I got I'm, I'm, I'm happy it took me a lot of trouble to get it put together uh, and this craftsman like I said they didn't have one with an oil port and I cleaned them up real good before the parts came in I gotta take uh, another picture just to show people. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I hope you like this video. I, I hope you learned something from it. some of you guys. Keep an eye out for your old tools out there. Don't pay market price for them. They're just, uh, they're getting crazy right now. Uh, I'm hoping the uh, prices start going down at the flea market. Once it gets hot in Oklahoma, it hits near 100, 105, 110. People quit going to flea markets, and I don't mind the heat. Uh, now I, I want to die in the heat. I've tried dying in the cold. That sucks, so the heat can't be near as bad. Anyways, uh, I think the prices will start going down once it starts getting hot because there's not as many people going to the vendors up there. And uh, the prices... The marketplace, they're a little high right now too. There's, I've been, I went on marketplace last night just looking for odd and end stuff, and man, some guys got some toolboxes that are, they're outrageous. Well, I'm babbling, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good evening and enjoy your day.